All right, uh, back to our main news this hour here on RT, the Russia-China summit right here in Moscow. Uh, for more analysis on Hu Jintao's visit, let's talk to political scientist Dr. Kiyul Chung in Beijing. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Chung. Um, China and Russia thank are you. on course uh, to become major trading partners. How might this impact on the global economy, for, ex uh, for instance, in Europe? You know, the, the China-Russia trade and economic relationship and the huge development between two nations, I believe, is not only of, of the impacting European continent, but also the global scene. This the economic trade the relationship is not only limited to economy. It's also related to the strategic relationship. So it is going to be huge impact to the world. So not just economic uh, agreements and a relationship, but also a strategic relationship, as you were saying. But Russia and China are on the same page when it comes to Libya and Syria. Do you think their collaboration could help to resolve these conflicts? Or would this even be welcomed by the Western powers already embroiled? As we heard yesterday from the Kazakhstan, where Hu Jintao attended at the SCO, the, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, I believe they officially oppose to further military escalation. They call for the peaceful resolution and end for any further military strike against Libya. I believe the Russia and China together with other Central Asian nations are trying to do more, play more positive, little more, I would say, constructive and aggressive role to stop the military intervention in Libya by U.S. and NATO forces. Okay, as, as, as you're saying, the Asian countries are, who, that attended the SCO uh, yesterday are, are opposed to any further escalation in the military uh, intervention in Libya and, and, and potentially in Syria. But now uh, it, it appears all smiles between Medvedev and Hu Jintao, uh, but there haven't always been agreements when it comes to Russia's gas supply to China. Admittedly, okay, this is, this is a commercial uh, interest, not a political one, but are the disagreements uh, likely to be ironed out? We've certainly seen some bickering going back and forth about the potential price of this gas exchange. According to Chinese media, as far as I read, it seems to me some positive breakthrough might come within the next two, three days while President Hu Jintao stays in Moscow. At the 10th anniversary of the, the China-Russia, I believe, Treaty for a Treaty of, let's say, good neighborliness and friendly cooperation, significant uh, the moment for two nations. For the sake of the, not only two nations, but also for the whole Eurasian continent, for the region, and for the global power relations, I believe two nations will succeed in their gas and already oil, you know, the, the operation between two nations begun last January. I believe this time they will make through this the gas the deal between two nations. Okay, so you see, you see this gas deal becoming a success between both nations. And as you were saying, certainly there are some regional implications there. But uh, as we were talking about a few moments ago about a uh, Wednesday's meeting of the Shanghai Co uh, Cooperation Organization in Kazakhstan, we did see a closer collaboration and big proposals put on the table between group members. Do you think it's possible that the SCO could become the economic mover and shaker of the world? I hope so and I believe so. Now, I believe the world is at the crossroad, historic crossroad, or some may say the world is at the brink of either being subdued or overcoming the U.S. NATO military intervention in Libya, now moving into possibly Syria, or even to Iran, if Russia, China, or these SCO, the, the alliance are weak, so that not enough to stop the U.S.-led NATO military aggression in North African region. So I, I hope so. The SCO, Russia, China, China, Russia leading, leading this new global movement to balance the power in the world so that they can build a new world order where no more unilateral aggressive or even colonial methodology being put into a sovereign nation such as Libya. Political scientist Dr. Kiyul Chung, live from Beijing. Thanks very much.